All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And Jake, we're back. It is time to kick off the 2023-2024 NFL season. The Rams are back. We're, we're in full swing. It feels a little unreal because we've been waiting so long uh, to watch the Rams play again and really to watch football again. I mean, the NFL kicked off last night because we're recording this on a Friday. I know you and I both watched the entire game and really the night game. It is just exhilarating <laughs> no matter what happens uh, because football is back and we're excited uh, to finally watch our team on Sunday, guys, when the Rams take on the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Game one, division rival, Jake, what are you feeling? What What's going to happen on Sunday? Well, Lexus, uh, you know, I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think when you look at the slate for week one, um, obviously football just being back is exciting in general, but I think this will be one of the more exciting games. Uh, the Rams have played the Seahawks since Sean McVay became the head coach 13 times in those times. Uh, they've had seven games come down to a uh, possession. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, interesting times going up against Seattle. I think when you, you look back at last year, even, you know, when John Wolford was under center, uh, that game came down to the wire. They lost in the final seconds of that game. And then you look the heartbreak in, uh, you know, week 18 with Baker Mayfield in the cold and, uh, yeah, some, uh, choice officiating as well, but, um, you know, they lost a close game in OT and, you know, I just think when you, you look at everything, you know, Sean McVay has done a nice job, eight and five all time against uh, the, you know, the Seattle Seahawks. But I think going into this game, it's huge because Seattle, they have a lot of talent. Um, they got a lot better, I think, uh, in terms of, well, at least the offense. Um, they did lose Ryan Neal, but they did go and replace him with one of your guys, Julian Love. And, you know, I think when you you look at just what Seattle's building here, they've changed the course of how they build their team. They got more Rams influence going out and getting Shane Waldron um, and Andy Dickerson and, you know, some other guys as well. And I think that influence is kind of rubbed off on them going out and getting JSN uh, in the draft is going to add to the offense. But, you know, this is a big game for the Rams because they got a tough uh, road ahead uh, obviously this is not your normal Rams team this is in the middle of a rebuild they can call it what they'd like Alexis they can call it a remodel all they want we know it's a rebuild uh, it's not fooling anybody and so I think at this point this stage in the game when you look you know the Rams really have to come out strong week one Sean McVay has only lost one week one game it was last year uh, to the Bills but um, this is a big one. You know, you got to come out strong. It's on the road. This is where you ended last season in heartbreak. Don't do it again because you got the 49ers week two and you got the Cincinnati Bengals week three. So it's not going to exactly get easier uh, moving forward. Yeah, they have a kind of a tough three week stretch uh, to open up the season. Um, I think the toughest game, obviously, of that stretch will be Cincinnati. Uh, week three yeah I mean you you talk about you know you brought up Julian Love which made me think of the Seahawks secondary and we're going to talk about um, their defense and their offense but it is so unfair to me that they have rookie Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois uh, they picked him fifth overall who you and I both really liked in the draft they have Tariq Woolen and they have Kobe Bryant and they just picked up a corner that I really liked in the draft, uh, Blue Kelly from Stanford. Um, they got him from Baltimore. So uh, just Seattle, getting all these corners that we really like. All right, Jake, this Seattle defense versus our offense. I want to look at this matchup first because let's face it, this Rams offense that has gotten no love in the media at all this offseason, people are saying, they're washed, they're toast. Matthew Stafford is going to have a bad season. Our offensive line is bad. The only receiving weapon that we have is Cooper Cup, who we all know is going to be out week one uh, with a hamstring injury. Uh, you know, Cam Akers, people are still a little bit up in the air about. So 
not saying that you and I agree with what the Rams media is saying, but looking at our offense going against an improved Seattle defense, as we talked about, uh, including, uh, you know, that dangerous secondary, what does Matthew Stafford and this offense need to do going up against Seattle? Yeah, well, you know, I think they got to go and uh, take a little bit. You know, you look at last year in week 18, you take a little bit about that, you know, the uh, the tape there. And you could see Tutu Atwell getting open every which way in week 18. Uh, There's about three touchdowns that were left on the field in that game. I went back and watched it. And, um, you know, I, I'm not trying to throw Baker under the bus or anything, but his arm limitations and the fact that it was in Seattle in January, it, it was just not not there right it really held back a guy like Tutu Atwell um, or a Van Jefferson somebody that can stretch the field so now you have Stafford and everything's on the table and if you're worried about the cold well it's a September game so you know I think really what they got to do is they got to take those shots if you have them you take them you know I think with Atwell he has had a fantastic camp by all accounts Uh, Van's had a good camp you know Puka Nakua the fifth round rookie has had a good camp and so I think it's really going to be all about how can you mix up your pitches um you know in the passing game with uh you know Cooper Cup out and so I think when you you go through everything Atwell's kind of interchangeable can work on the outside can work on the inside um good route runner but also he's your deep threat Van can be your deep threat we've already seen his ability to do that um and Stafford and him have connected on numerous occasions the last time Stafford was on the field he threw a touchdown to Tutu Atwell so keep that in mind but then Puka Nakua you know what can he do as a rookie and then you look at Kyron Williams who I think is the real wild card here because he was getting reps with the first team um you know you see him or you hear about him catching touchdowns from Stafford in the joint practices on those wheel routes it makes me wonder kind of what we saw last night with Jameer Gibbs although not used as much as he should have been kind of makes me wonder if that's kind of how they you know plan to split Kyron Williams and Cam Akers like Akers will get the 21 carries Kyron might get seven to nine or ten um, but he's going to be used predominantly you know as a pass catcher and I, I feel like if that's the case they might have him over you know Puka Nakua out there um, because of his you know his presence as a second year guy um, then you look at Demarcus Robinson who I mean let's be honest here he hasn't missed a game he has the most experience of anybody uh, in that Rams room he could you know potentially get on the field and, and play some bit and then Ben Skoranek you know who they basically shut down after one preseason game they're like all right we've seen enough don't want to get you hurt so I think there's a lot of different ways they can go but I think really the key Alexis is that you know Stafford got a lot lighter in the offseason lost some weight they're rebuilding not only rebuilding um the you know the team they're going through a rebuild but they rebuilt this offense from the ground up and it sounds to me like they want to have more bootlegs and they want to go out and you know have him go on the move a little bit and then also balance out the run and pass because that's why they went out and got Mike LaFleur like we've talked about is we've said so many times they need to run the ball more they need to run the ball more I think the key going into this game is doing just that and so you know hopefully they're able to balance it out but I think that's ultimately the plan is you mix up your pitches you get these guys involved if you have a deep shot you take it that's why you have Stafford Um, but you don't want to go too pass heavy you don't want to go too run heavy and so I think it's it's all about the balance there against what I think is a a solid defense although they're going to be without Witherspoon and they're going to be without Adams so that's something to keep in mind yeah I actually like that example of Montgomery and Gibbs you know as a comparison for Akers and Kyron because I do I do think that that is a very similar usage of you know how the Lions view Montgomery is I think how they view Akers and how they view Gibbs is how they view Kyron so that'll be interesting to see if it plays out that way uh, looking at this Seattle defense um, I think the running backs are going to be very involved and I say that because yes they're missing you know Adams and Witherspoon in their secondary but they still have a pretty good secondary and if I'm the Rams I'm not super in love with Seattle's uh, you know front three um, I mean, Mario Edwards, Jaron Reed, and Draymond Jones. Now, certainly a solid, um, you know, front three 
But I think compared to the secondary and what they can do against, you know, the passing game, I say to start out the game, you just run the ball. I mean, you see up up front uh, because I don't think that it's going to go as well as Seattle might hope. I think that the Rams have a really big opportunity to come out early and really start strong in the running game. And everyone who listens to our show knows that you and I, for years, are always begging the Rams to run the ball more. And I do think that they're going to start doing that. We started to see it, you know, towards the end of the season when they realized they kind of had to change some things up. So we'll see. But yeah, I think the key offensively for the Rams in this game is going to be utilized run game. Not to mention, it also can't hurt because Cooper Cup, number one, is out. And you mentioned a lot of the other receivers that the Rams have. They're very good players. I think they're all underrated. Um, I think people sleep on the Rams receiving core. I'm not saying it's one of the best in the league, but it's certainly uh, not the worst. And, you know, I have confidence in all of those guys to step up and make plays if need be. But I still think that they should run the ball. Um, Defensively, Jake, our defense also looks very different this year, not just our offense. Uh, We lost a lot of key players. A lot of people are saying that they're very nervous. Uh, anybody who watched preseason knows that they pretty they did struggle. I mean, we it, it, we can't say that they didn't. I get that it's just preseason, but it obviously is not fun to see. There are some bright spots uh, in young corners. Speaking of corners, you know, Jacoby Durant, Trey Tomlinson. Uh, but I think there's a lot of nervousness, Jake, amongst Rams fans about kind of the unknown of this Rams defense. I mean, a lot of these guys are unproven. You lose a guy like Bobby Wagner. I mean, Ernest Jones is a very solid linebacker. Rose Boom in there. Uh, a lot of people, I think, aren't really giving the Rams defense a fair chance. What do you think is the key for this Rams defense going against Seattle's offense, who I hate to say I think is also a little underrated? I mean, Geno Smith, uh, everybody, nobody ever wants to mention him. He's a very good quarterback. They got JSN, which is the guy I know that you and I both really liked at wide receiver, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Kenneth Walker, and uh, the running back from UCLA, who all the Rams fans wanted. So, of course, very stacked offense. What do you think this young, unproven Rams defense needs to do on Sunday, Jake? Well, you know, Alexis, when I look at this unproven Rams defense, I see players that, well, there's some players last year, mix of players that we saw, you know, really contribute at a high level. Um, You know, I think you look at Jacoby Durant and you look at Ernest Jones and you're thinking, okay, they have something there. Then you look at Bobby Brown, the way he played down the stretch, and you're like, okay, they have something there. Then you have guys like Jonah Williams, you know, who also played well down the stretch. They found Michael Hoyt, although he did not have a good preseason. Um, you know, and I think when you kind of combine everybody and then you add in, you know, the rookies, you add in John Johnson, um, you know, and some guys that really didn't get a chance, but had really good camps. Like Andrew Siciliano flat out told me that, you know, Quentin Lake had like the best camp of anybody. Um, you know, it, it really adds kind of this intrigue to this team. And I think really their 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 secondary looks really good i'm not gonna lie i'm actually very high on their secondary it's unproven to a degree but akella witherspoon is the real interesting wild card here because before last year those two years before last year he was really good as a corner for the pittsburgh steelers he suffered a hamstring sound familiar and he misses the entire season so you know essentially he's back he's healthy they basically named him the starter the moment he walked in. So you have him, you have Durant, and then you have Trey Tomlinson, the fifth rounder who, or sixth rounder, excuse me, who looked outstanding in preseason. And he looked outstanding apparently when covering Devonte Adams. Um, so this is somebody that has kind of surprised us and he could play a little bit on the outside as well on the inside. And then you have Darion Kendrick, who I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not very high on, and I don't know if you're very high on, but they're very high on. They like him a lot, so we'll see what ends up happening. We didn't get to see him in preseason. Um, He's a sixth rounder as well, so we'll see what ends up happening there. They go out and get Duke Shelley. He was one of the best corners in the league the last seven games of uh, last year, 
And, you know, it's it's a fascinating move there because Sean Jolly, who made the 53, got put on IR, and then they just waived him today. So, you know, Duke Shelley could end up playing some serious time, and then you look at the secondary and in the safety room, and you're like, okay, they got Russ East, they got Quentin Lake. Like, these guys aren't necessarily proven, but, you know, you're optimistic about them because you've heard good things. Jordan Fuller, if he stays healthy, he's a starting caliber safety, so you feel good about that. And, uh, of course, you know, John Johnson. So I don't know who's going to be out there starting, except I know it's Akello. I know it's Dakota Durant. And I know Jordan Fuller will. Everybody else, it's kind of a question mark. We don't know how they're going to line guys up. I think the key here is to not go overboard uh, with anything. You don't want to be too conservative, but you don't want to be too aggressive. So, you know, obviously everyone knows Raheem Morris's defense being incredibly, um, you know, I, I would say just passive, right? I think that's a good term for it, you know, with the bend, don't, bend break. don't break. But at the same time, from what I've heard is that he wants to ramp it up a bit this year. They want to blitz more. They want to have more aggression. They want to, you know, play a little bump and run every now and then, you know, get up in their faces on the line of scrimmage. And so you got to find a healthy balance of that because DK Metcalf, if you go to punch him at the line of scrimmage and he wins, you're done. You're in the dust. Same with Tyler Lockett, although he's not really physically imposing, but you get my point. So I think looking at the Rams defense and how they want to, you know, approach this is first off, if you're not getting edge pressure, you're going to have to send some guys, you know, blitzing. It's simple as that. Because if you're not going to get any pressure, doesn't matter how well your guys are covering, they're, they're going to have all day to throw. So you can't have that. And so I think, Alexis, when you look at how, you know, this game could go, um, I think this is going to be a straight-up shootout. I think the secondary could show some signs of being able to cover a DK Metcalf, being able to cover a Tyler Lockett, uh, being able to cover a, a JSN. But at the end of the day, I just don't trust that pass rush. And I, I've told you it before. I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Like, they could have gone out and gotten somebody. You know, Jacob Martin was cut by the Texans. They could have gotten him. Malik Reed, somebody we interviewed on this very show, they could have gone out and gotten him, a scheme fit. You know, and so this is where I'm like, if they end up losing a game because of that, I'm, it's not an I told you so moment. I won't be that, but... I mean, they're really rolling here. They're rolling the dice here with these edge defenders. I love Byron Young. I like Michael Hoyt's story. Nick Hampton was raw coming out of App State. I like the pick. And Van Valkenburg, it was a fun watch during the preseason. But that's not a great edge room. And so if Seattle's, you know, tackles Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross, if they keep them under wraps... They're not getting any pressure, and Donald's the only one, and now they can triple team, quadruple team, penta team, whatever the hell comes next after that. They could literally do that because no one's getting edge pressure, so Gina's going to have all day. And when you have the talent yeah. of DK, and you got Fant, who I didn't even talk about, and then you got your running backs and Charbonneau and Walker, it's like, I, I mean, if you're not getting any pressure, Gino's going to have all day to throw. So, Alexis, I'm not saying Gino will literally have all day to throw, but I expect him to have a lot of time. Um, and so I think that's going to lead to a shootout type of game. I think Seattle's offensive line is solid. You know, it's not amazing, but I think that they're, they're solid. And like you said, our pass rush just feels weak and I think a lot of us felt that going into preseason and then we watched preseason and it kind of confirmed all of our worst fears and then the Rams didn't go and get anybody they released Daniel Hardy who I think was actually one of the better promising young edge rushers on the team um you know Van Valkenburg though is very exciting to watch like you said so there's optimism yeah I I think that the Saint the Saints the Seahawks <laughs> offense is going to pretty much pick apart um, us up front, at least. Um, I think the secondary, like you said, you know, everybody is unproven, but in a way, I think that's an advantage for teams in the NFL 
you know, a lot of people look at it as, oh, well, you know, we, we don't know what anybody's like, you know, from the fan perspective, and that annoys us, and that makes us nervous. But it's a competitive advantage as a team because no one has seen us on tape together ever and what they're going to do. Yeah. There's not a lot of tape on some of these players, so, you know, you can go watch some of it, but, you know, it's kind of hard for some of these guys to probably get a full scope of what they can do. So it is an advantage to the Rams. It's annoying to us as fans because we're like, what's going on? Who can do what? You know, what does this mean? Who who should play there? You know, whatever. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that I think the game is going to be a shootout because I still am nervous about the Rams' offense going into Seattle. Like you going into Seattle is like a very it makes it a difficult environment regardless of the state of your team it's just a hard place to play it's hard environment um I am a little bit nervous about kind of just how well the offense is gelling together but I hope I'm wrong about that because I hope that they get out there and surprise us and are clicking right away um and like I said I think our receiving core I think a lot of people are trying to troll them on social media but they're not that bad maybe they're just also you know a little bit unproven let's get into some predictions uh we'll bring that back uh people who listen to our show the past few seasons know (laughs) that we always end the show giving our like step fun stat predictions where we try to be kind of bold um although sometimes i don't like getting bold because it makes me nervous people also know that i get a little superstitious and then we predict the score um, and I don't know if we tallied last season, Jake, how many we got correct. I don't think we did I with the scores. Doubt um, I although got last anything season correct. was a dumpster fire either. I don't know that there was any um anytime I predicted something for the Rams last season, it the exact opposite happened, no matter what it was. So I think I just kind of like disassociated at some point. What year um, did they block the punt? With Michael Hoyt, I think. Was that last year? Because I I got that right. (laughs) That's the only one I know that I got right. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Because, like, who's like, yeah, I think they're going to block a punt. (laughs) No, but now I want to make that a prediction for this game. Because I I don't know. Like, this this Rams-Seahawks matchup is, like, like, in May what I thought that this would go like, it would be a completely different answer than I would give you now. Because back in May, I'd be like, oh, the Rams, you know, fully healthy going into Seattle. But I didn't know all the players we were going to lose. I didn't know how our draft was going to go. I didn't know the injuries. So it was kind of like now, as I'm just seeing everything unfold through preseason, I'm nervous. And we'll get to that. We'll do our predictions first. But like, yeah, if you guys can't tell, I've, I've, I have anxiety about this game, not just because it's week one, but it's just, it's very confusing. Yeah, I think he's he's like, okay, cool. Um, No, (laughs) no, no. I think that I'm trying, cause I'm trying to think like, that's the problem is like, you put me on the spot with predictions. So do you want me to go first? Cause I don't know. I, I, do you know what you're going to say? Or are you like also trying to think of something? Well, I'm, I know one. All right. I'm gonna say there's gonna be a two two. There's gonna be a two two out wall touchdown. There is. Yeah. I do. There. Okay. <laughs> I. I. I think Matthew Stafford's gonna get sacked at least like three times. I hate saying that. I'm very nervous about this offensive line going. And I know that I was. I'm giving contradictory information because I'm like. Oh, up front, you know, Seattle's not that good, but that's not really about them up front. I think it's more that I'm just nervous about how this offensive line is going to gel together. So I hope I'm wrong about that. And I'm going to say, um, I'm not really going to say blocked punt, but like. But you want to. Now I'm thinking about it because we. I'm Matthew Safford gets sacked three times. I'm going to say Rams interception. Someone on that secondary, they all are like itching for it when we were watching preseason and I'm going to say, I'm going to say Rams two interceptions. Wow. So Gino's getting picked twice because I, I could see like, could you not see Jacoby Durant? Yes. And like 
John John Johnson getting a pick would be it would feel right, would it not? I can definitely see that. It's funny. I think we're definitely on the not same page he- there. Um, I don't know about two interceptions. Like that's well, well you got to do know. a pretty. You usually do like you usually throw out like the one that I am too. Like I give my predictions, and everyone's always like Alexis is so like superstitious and like is making tame predictions and then jake comes out and says something like blocked punt and then it happens or like something (laughs) crazy that was crazy and i'm over here with my like i i think tutu atwell will get a touchdown and then like watch everyone else except for him and that's usually how it goes so all right i'm gonna say tutu goes for 120 i think he is 120 yards and and that touchdown um i think this yep. is the the t2 outwell game you know i've said on just about everything i'm like this is the t2 outwell breakout game it really is it, you know he's been waiting he's been hearing all the creed humphrey talk um he's been hearing bus 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 since he was drafted um you know i think last year he was kind of showing you like in that limited time down the stretch with not a great bunch of quarterback play uh he has what it takes and he's going to be the wide receiver too in this one. I mean, you could. Uh, what What are the odds right now? Um, or, or sorry, what What are the the props right now? It's like two two outwells at thirty and a half. Uh, take that all day, you know, uh, over that. So I mean, I would probably do an alternate. I'd probably go. Can I do a hundred? Can I do a hundred yards? I'd put money down on a hundred yard alternate uh, wide receiver yards uh receiving yards so yeah i don't know um i think atwell goes for 120 i think we see a bryson hopkins touchdown um i do here's my rationale this isn't just it's gonna happen like like the punt uh, no one no matter what anyone says if you predict a punt block like you're a dope because like there's no actual reason to believe that was gonna happen i just had a feeling right (laughs) the <laughs> I'm gonna predict a Rams kick out of bounds <laughs> on a on a Seattle on a Seattle ex, on a Seattle field goal. The Rams are gonna block a kick to win the game. That'd be sick. Can you imagine that? No, we, we didn't even talk about the Rams special teams, which I don't want to. But <laughs> we we didn't even like. And here I am, like. The Rams are going to block a kick <laughs> and run it back for a touchdown. Oh, so because I don't want to cheat everybody, the rationale essentially for the Bryson Hopkins touchdown is this. Right. I think they're going to be in 12 personnel down, you know, in the red area. And I think everyone and their mother is going to be keying in on Tyler Higby in the red zone. No one caught more touchdown passes during camp in the red zone than Tyler Higby. So I think it'll be reverse, right? It'll be reverse psychology because it's like, oh, they always go to Higby. It's going to be Higby. I think they're going to go to Hopkins. And I already know that Stafford can throw to anybody because in the division, uh, they can even talk, the, the, the divisional round of the NFC playoffs against the uh, Buccaneers, he threw that goal line touchdown to Kendall Blanton. Of all people, Kendall Blanton, like he was throwing on third and long converting in the Super Bowl to Bryson Hopkins. Like he was throwing deep balls in the NFC title game against the 49ers to Ben Skoranek who hadn't like run any routes that year. So I don't think and this is why I'm like I'm not really that worried about Cooper Cup because he'll be back. It's not for the season. Because Stafford will just work with what he has. Like, I've said it so many times, it sounds like a broken record with the the Lions. He would throw deep down the field seam busters over the middle to third-string tight ends. Like, Hunter Bryant caught one in, in a big clutch situation. Uh, he'd throw to Adrian Peterson out of the backfield. He'd throw to Danny Amendola. Like, okay, sure, he had Marvin Jones. Sure, he had Kenny Galladay. He would spread the ball out. And so I think Bryson Hopkins will come away with a touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised if your guy Kyron did as well. I want him to get one so bad. 
because he didn't play to like the end of the season last season and he just didn't he got like three you know not enough carries a game to you know he was more of the pass pro um that we know he can be and he's very good at um but i hope that they'll use him for more but like you said they've been using him as a receiver uh, quite a lot um so i'm excited to see what he does on sunday but as usual guys the predictions were very different mine was just like a very conservative like it'd be so nice if tutu out will get a touchdown and then jake just which is good which is good someone's yeah. got to do it i'm too afraid speaking I'm... of being afraid <laughs> let's go to our oh what are you gonna say well, because uh, I just, I don't know why I forgot. I actually did a whole prediction tweet. I don't know if you saw it. It got a lot of hate. You got a lot of hate because it was a Rams win over the Seahawks. But I literally predicted all the touchdowns that would be scored. So I'm the oracle if I get these right. You ready for this? Cam Akers rushing, yeah. Tutu Atwell receiving, Bryson Hopkins receiving, Kyron Williams receiving. Then I even predicted Seattle's touchdowns. Okay. So I got Zach Charbonnet rushing, Kenneth Walker rushing, Tyler Lockett receiving, DK Metcalf receiving, player of the game 2-2 Atwell, Rams win 34-31. So that's your score prediction. You're going to stand by it, 34 Locking it right in there right now. <laughs> oh, boy, people are not going to like me. Um, so here's the thing. You talk about reverse psychology earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to kind of do that with my predictions. I'm going to predict the Seahawks win. And I'm going to predict you. that they win 24 to 21. Okay. Because I felt, okay, but I've been going back and forth, 24, 21 Rams, 24, 21 Seahawks. I just, I can't seem, my heart can't decide. And I think at the end of the day, I'm just a little, I'm worried about that offense against our defense still. I just am. And I feel like Geno Smith, Geno Smith is my dynasty quarterback. I'm not afraid to say it, Jake. You know, you're in my dynasty league. <laughs> I'm, I'm higher on Geno Smith than a lot of people. I think a lot of people are unfair to Geno Smith, and I'm nervous about it. But I think it's going to be 24 to 21. It might be, I hope it's the Rams, but I'm going to say the Seahawks. And I don't want to hear all of the people that la when they get on YouTube and they're like, they always predict the Rams win. Last year when we went five and twelve, no one can say that. <laughs> well, they can say it to okay, me, I'm... but I don't know. I mean, here's the thing though: it's weird. The fan base seems to be collectively split. There's one half of the fan base that wants to win and they want to enjoy the season, and they're ex excited like you and I. Like mm, you're not yeah. happy about the loss. You're just you're trying to give them a realistic prediction, like what you truly are thinking. Um, but then there's another half, yeah. and that half is like they're watching college football. They're watching the quarterbacks. They're wanting one of those quarterbacks. They're pretending that Matthew Stafford is 45 instead of 35, and that is that half. And you all are welcome to watch our show, and I appreciate all of you that view us, but I'm calling you out. There are half of you that don't want to win football games, and there are half of you that do. And for the half of you that don't want to win, you're going to be like, yeah, Alexis, keep doing it. For the half of you that want to win, you might have a little issue with Alexis' uh, pick. Look, I think it's uh, – I have 34-31. I think the Rams win this game. But, I mean, I think both teams are good. I have the Seahawks at a 9-8 and eight record to end the season, and I have the Rams at 10-7. and seven. Like, I think both teams are going to be fighting for a playoff berth, uh, you know, late into December and January. And so I don't think it's crazy at all. Uh, plus, they're the home team. Um, but, you know, I think... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, one thing I was going to say, Alexis. One thing. We talked on everything. I have to say, I love what the Rams did on the offensive line. I really do. I believe in the Rams' offensive line. They're healthy. Um, I think that there are a lot of people out there that kind of looked at last year's offensive line like the last time they saw it and it gave them nightmares and so they're just like used to that but i think week one they didn't even get a chance to see what it was immediately they got hurt you had your center get hurt and then 
genius idea. Your backup center was your right guard. So then when they both got hurt, you were down to Jeremiah Cologne as your center. Um, also, no boom was hurt. And then they put in Ankrum. <laughs> they put in Ankrum. At <laughs> it's just so absurd. It's they, so sad. Like, they, it just is oh, I felt bringing bad. back a lot of trauma. The, the Ankrum bringing back trauma. was sad because he starts. They're like, oh, it's his first start. And then he breaks his leg. So it's like, and that's our guy because he came on our show. So it's like week two, yeah. he gets hurt. No boom's playing injured. Alaric Jackson, you want to talk about them getting bit by the injury bug and like health concerns and all that? Alaric Jackson had blood clots. Like, what are the odds? Like, he literally had to sit out the rest of the year when he was playing at a, at a decently high level considering what was around him. So the Rams are calling guys off of the practice squad. They're signing guys off of the Bears practice squad. They're calling guys up that have been free agents for two years. They are call they called up a guy, Ty Inseki, who was a Ram in 2012. So th that's all you need to know. This is different. They actually have depth. Like, I can't even believe I'm saying that. And then you look at the preseason. I don't know if you had a chance to go through, like, all the preseason reps again, but... The offensive line was good in the preseason. The issue was Stetson Bennett the last two games, and maybe he was injured or not, but the offensive line blocked well. So aside from Logan Bruss had his moments. So I look at this, Alexis. I think if you want to buy into the Rams, the offensive line is a lot better this year than people realize. I think Alec Jackson's a lock at left tackle. As long as he doesn't deal with anything like that again, uh, he is a lock. I think he was playing well. He's played well ever since, you know, he's ever been introduced to left tackle uh, in a Rams uniform. Then you have Steve Avila. He might be the future center, right? But right now he's playing left guard. And he's very good in pass pro, and he's very good in the run game. Then you have center. They have a they have a good problem to have. They got two starting centers. They got Brian Allen, who could play a Pro Bowl alternate in his own right, and Coleman Sheldon, who I think is better. And those are, they have those two options there. Then right guard, they have three options. They got Joe Noteboom is probably going to start. And if he's poor, if he struggles, they went out and they got Kevin Dotson from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I loved that move. And then they were going to start Tremaine Ankrum before Noteboom even got to this point. And then you have big Rob Havenstein who, you know, solidifies the right tackle spot. And I don't know. I just, I feel good. Like Zach Thomas had a really good preseason. So he's a backup there. He offers depth. They have more depth than people realize. And it's not your stereotypical, oh, it's like the Rams offensive line. Like this could actually be a solid offensive line. And at the end of the day, all they have to do is be top 15. And they're going to, that gives Stafford enough time to throw. That gives Stafford and Sean McVay enough time to actually run, go through full progressions and plays and what have you. You just can't have last year where you're bottom of the league. If they are even top 20, it's fine from last year. Last year wasn't acceptable. Stafford would get the ball. He would have pressure in his face immediately and would have to sidearm it just to make sure it didn't get bad at the line of scrimmage. And he'd probably have to go to Cooper Cup because he was the only one who he had a rapport with aside from Tyler Higby. So I think this year, better offensive line think they're going to be top 15 at least i could see them being top 10 i think they're going to surprise people i think the new offensive line coach is going to do a lot with that as well ryan wendell but i think the offensive line keeps stafford upright he goes through his progressions and now all of a sudden the the complaints about stafford only throwing a cup or only throwing a higby i think go out the window i think he still is capable of spreading the ball all over the field i think last year it's just hard to to fault him when he had guys in his lap as soon as he hiked the ball. Yeah, I definitely can say that I'm more optimistic about our offensive line than I have been in the <laughs> past. I don't know if I'm quite at your level with it, but I'm optimistic. I'm willing to give it a chance. I've opened my heart. You're and ready I'm to get hurt again. To... I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to get back out there and just put all my trust into something. And I'm like they have in the past. They do, but I'm I'm willing to open my heart to the Rams offensive line. Um, yeah, it is like you and I have said multiple times, I think, you know, on the show and online, it's an unproven team. Um, so I'm very excited. I'm very nervous for Sunday, as I know everybody is. I mean, I'm just happy football is back. Will I be saying that if for some reason the Seahawks blow us out 40 to nothing? 
No, but as of now, I'm very excited for the season. I know everybody else is. And we all need to just put the dumpster fire that eyes. It's over. It doesn't matter. Just don't think about it. It's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. It's game one. It's game one. Like, literally nothing else matters. I know that's, like, brilliant analysis, but I'm just trying to give people perspective because I keep seeing, you know, everybody talking about last season and how we need to tank for a quarterback or how the Rams are purposely trying to be bad, you know, to tank just doesn't make sense you and i have spoken about that i think a lot so we don't need to get into it but guys the rams want to win and i think that they're they've set themselves up to do so and the first shot is on sunday against the seattle seahawks in seattle jake that it is alexis craft that it is uh they're not tanking newsflash uh they are going to try and win this football game and i think they get it done alexis doesn't it's okay we move and uh We'll be back after. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I'm <laughs> I just, was totally just I wanted, messing with you. you. Know, I, I know, but, like, it's like I can't, like, I don't want to, like, not be true to what I'm thinking. But then at the same time, it's like I don't need people saying, like, I'm being honest. Like, I yeah. think, like, you know, back against the wall, that's what I'm saying. But I hope I'm wrong. I think it's going to be close. Like, I don't think, I don't think either of these teams um, are, you know, built uh to blow each other out. Um, I also think that these are the top two teams um, in our in the NFC West, which a lot of people don't agree with me on. But I'm higher on the Seahawks than I am the 49ers by far. So that's – I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I, I am. I, I don't – the 49ers have a quarterback. that Their offense is as good as – everyone else thinks they are and i'm not just saying that because they're in our division because i just spoke very highly about the seahawks no i there's something about the niners like even when i was picking them to go 11 and 6 i'm like i don't know i they have a tough schedule as well by the way yeah i think i they, can't name it they're gonna lose the top that first, of my head but they're gonna lose that first game against uh pittsburgh yeah i think they are too especially it's in pittsburgh too Yes. I've won that game. Yeah. So. I yeah. I mean, I, now there's film on Brock Purdy. So I, I think there is a good chance that the Rams are going into their home opener 1-0 versus an 0-1 49er team. And whether they want to make them 0-2, I mean, they want to. Whether they're going to make them 0-2 at that point, I don't know. But that's, what, that's my feeling is that well, that's what we'll be seeing next week. And we'll cover that when we have our 49ers episode, which is always contentious each other, but just the <laughs> idea of 49ers is we, it's a different vibe with Seahawks, but guys, we are playing the Seahawks Sunday. Very exciting. Jake and I will be back. Um, a couple days after that day or two with our recap episode, but until then guys, Enjoy game one. Stay safe. Have a good time. Football's back. Uh, we've had a long wait, and we deserve this. But, guys, until then, stay safe, take care, and go Rams.